What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another video for you guys today and it's the player ratings for Liverpool 5, Chelsea 3 and top 4 I guess is going to the final day, we thought we were going to be able to confirm it with a potential draw or win against the Liverpool side that might have had their eyes focused on the title coronation post match but a potential very special comeback was ruined by an idiot in goal. Before I start this video, I just want to say, if you guys haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And don't forget to press the bell notification button to be the first to know whenever I release any new content. Now, let's talk about this game. We started the game with more or less the same lineup as the Manchester United game. And it kind of made sense to me. Liverpool were going to try and focus most of their attacks off the crosses through the fullback. Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson and I thought it was smart with us trying to play with the same defensive mindset that we had from the game on Sunday. The only real changes were Kepa was putting goal which obviously had an impact on the game as we know and bar that I don't really think there, was, there wasn't much change in the lineup. It was the same back five, same pivot of Jorginho and Kovacic and William Mount and Giroud up front. Now a lot of people are going to look at this and they're going to say the first big problem with today was that we didn't start Christian Pulisic and I get it, William looked tired where he looked out of it but I still get that William's been in brilliant form since the start of since we've come back from lockdown and I kind of get keeping him on for the first 45 minutes. I get Pulisic's impact when he came onto the field is immense but that could have been part of the tactics as well. Bring him on later on into the game where he's the freshest player on the pitch. Look what he did when he first came onto the pitch. And he beat three man out of nothing and set up the, the goal for Tammy Abraham. The first half looked pretty even to be fair. I felt both teams were... It was it was it was neck and neck. Either team could have had the first goal, and the first goal came out of William getting caught in possession and caught in the Liverpool press, which we all know is really hard to get out of. You cannot underestimate the Liverpool press, and Keita smashed in a brilliant goal for one nil. That looked a bit tough at, the, at that point, but we could still work with it from then. Then we get a free kick for something that I think is complete BS. And Sammy said that it was a free kick, but I still think it's soft as hell. And it wouldn't have been called if it was us. But it happened to be Liverpool, the media darlings as per usual, and they got the free kick. And fucking Kepa did fuck all. He just stood there. He just stood there and let the ball go past. Look, I get it if you've got low confidence. I get it, but bruv, try. Everything is about effort. If you try, then no one is going to hate you too much. But if you're just going to stand there and just watch the ball go past you, what's the point? You might as well have a hologram in goal. Seriously, second goal could have been avoided. Even if the foul wasn't there, the second goal could have been avoided if you just jumped for it. Third goal was just another defensive lapse as per usual when it comes to a set piece. It was just so amateur, if I'm being honest. Reese James, I'm... I don't really blame him for getting caught up in the rebound. He flinched a little bit when Aldum didn't and he used that split second to get the ball and smash it past Kepa for 3-0. Not that it's been so hard recently, but it is what it is. And at that point, it looks like his game set and match unless we can pull a game out. And then Olivier Giroud comes out of nowhere with hope. Gets the ball in just before the stroke of half time and it's been... So it's been a trait for him recently. He did that against Manchester United. He did that, he did that against Watford as well. I feel like he's done that in another game as well. I can't really remember it right now. It's not really the focus in my head. But 3-1, there's hope. There is hope. Then second half comes in and straight out of nowhere, we have to give Roberto Firmino his first league goal in Anfield in over a year because we love breaking players' ducks. It just is what it is. At that point... It does look like game set and match, but then Lampard pulls out his plan B. He brings on Tammy Abraham, Callum hudson Adoy, and Christian Pulisic. Three players who had amazing performances when they came off the bench. Tammy Abraham got the goal for the second goal, but we're only going to talk about Christian Pulisic and the way he set it up. He took three Liverpool players straight out of the game, and it was brilliant from him. And he looked like a man possessed, trying to say, You dare leave me out of this game? Are you crazy? Cool. And the guy used that as motivation. And that is exactly why he should be signed against Wolves. I don't care about this plan B sort of thing. It was maybe Lampard wanted that to work in this game. It didn't work. I want to see him start in the next game. We then pull it back to 4-3. With, uh, what was it? 
It was a great it was a great bit of composure from Christian Pulisic for the third goal. And I like how Tammy Abraham was able to take both Van Dijk and Gomez out at the same time with just challenging for the ball. Set up nicely for Christian Pulisic. I think Hudson Odoi was involved in the goal as well. I'm not so sure. I can't remember for the life of me. But at that point, it looks optimistic. And we look like we're on the way back to some brilliant comeback. Liverpool fans are getting too hyped up. They're already putting fireworks out in front of the cop end. And we're sitting there like, if we can get a comeback back and if we can just humble them before they lift the title we might even ruin the whole trophy pray for them and then what happens t-rex arms happens then another ball comes in out of nowhere guy tries to save it and hologram arms just can't save and it just goes into back of the net for 5-3 for alex oxay chamberlain and the game is done the game is finished and it's so frustrating because i really think we could have come back I really do think momentum was on Chelsea's side and we could have at least snuck out there with a draw. But the team was working together and the goalkeeper let us down. I've tried to defend Kepa so much this season, but he don't look like his head's in it. That entire game just looked like a guy who was devoid of confidence, didn't really want to push himself. I mean, that set piece in the last couple minutes where Kepa, was ju where Kepa just stood there out of nowhere. Rudiger as well was left Van Dijk out of nowhere. But you notice how five or six of the players are all shouting at Kepa. The confidence and the belief just isn't there. And I said how the, what was it? Was it the, Aston, the West Ham game just might have completely changed our transfer direction. Made us, made us look like we need to focus more on the defender. We need to look at our goalkeeper, man. I really, really want to see Kepa work. And I don't know, maybe the optimist in me still thinks it can work. But the Kepa agenda has taken such a huge beating this season. I'm sitting here just like, what's even the point? Really, what is the point? I'm sitting here defending a guy who don't even believe in himself. You need to be able to believe in yourself. You need to have the effort. And if you ain't got that, then how would you expect anyone else to believe in you? But the good thing is... Top four is still in our hands, I guess, if we can just beat Wolves. I don't even know who we start with in goal because I don't know if Caballero is any better. I think Caballero is just as rash as Kepa. But the, the floor is literally the standard right now. So I don't know. Let's just go straight into the player ratings. We're going to start in goal with Kepa. Zero. No, no, no. I'll give him a one. His distribution was a bit better. I'm going to give him a zero. He cost us the game straight up. Straight up cost us the game. If he had stronger arms to it, if he had the balls to go for the Trent free kick, it might have been a different game. But I just need conviction and belief in yourself. And we didn't see that today. So zero for Kepa. I don't care. Zero. As for Equator, don't think he was that bad today. I really don't think he was. I thought he had a couple decent blocks and interceptions in there. May have got overrun by a couple of counter-attacks, but again, I don't really think it's his fault to blame. And you do still have to give Liverpool credit as a football team, so I'm going to give Azpilicueta a 6. Zuma, I'm going to give him a 6 as well. I thought his passing wasn't that bad today. I thought he was really good. Other players, I think, let him down a little bit. But I don't think Zuma or Azpilicueta were to blame today, so I'm going to give Zuma a 6 as well. Rudiger, I'm going to give a 4. He looked rash as hell today. Didn't look like he could clear a ball to save his life, and they just pressed to death. They just pressed him to death, and he couldn't handle it. It just got, it all got to his head, and he didn't look confident. He didn't look composed, and that was part of the reason why we got overran. It's because of Rudiger, so I'm giving him a four. Reese James, I thought he was very energetic down that right hand side. I also want to say because I didn't give him enough credit in the Manchester United game. He was brilliant in that match. He was brilliant in this match as well. I think if some of the players around us had much more had a more attacking mindset, we might have had a better result. But his, his crosses were testing. So I'm going to give Reese James a 6 as well. Uh, Jorginho. Thought he kept himself in and around. Passes weren't that bad. He was trying to find players and trying to keep the ball out of pressure. And I thought he did his job pretty well. I'd give, I'd give Jorginho a 6 as well. You've got to remember, when it comes to outfield players, I don't think a lot of the players let us down. I think the, most of the problems were in goal and our set pieces. But I don't think in the, in the stance of play, a lot of players let us down. Again, you do have to give Liverpool credit. They are a very good team for a reason. Um, who else are we going to? Uh, Kovacic. Ball was glued to his feet as per usual. I think he struggled with the final ball a little bit. Uh, I do also think he, there wasn't really a lot of options for him going forward. Liverpool's defensive shape was very strong. 
I'd say Jorginho's the better player, but I don't think Jor Ka uh, Kovacic was that bad. I think I'd actually give him a five and a half. I don't think he was that bad today. Alonso. Decent in the first half, but just faded away in the second half. And he just lost all confidence in himself. Half the time, he was just passing sideways or backwards, and he was just killing the attack. For that second half alone, I'm taking him down to a five. I'm very tempted to put him at a four. In fact, I am going to put him in a four because I think he killed a lot of the attacks in the second half. William looked pretty gassed today, but he still tracked back a lot. Going forward, not really the best, but defensively, I think he did his job well, so I'm going to give him a six. Mason Mount, again, didn't looked a little bit gassed today, I'll be real. I, I did like his attempt, I just didn't think his execution was all there. So I'm going to give Mason Mount a 5. Olivier Giroud kept himself in and about with the 50-50s. Was always, was always challenging the Liverpool defenders and giving them a hard time whenever he could. And he was rewarded with the goal. I'm going to give him a 6 or 7. Uh, I'm going to push to a 6. I think he had a good performance today. But again, because the result was nothing game-changing. So I'm going to give Olivier Giroud a 6. Moving on to subs bench. Uh, Tammy Abraham. I'm gonna give him a six as well because of his because of the second goal and because of his his uh, contribution to the third goal as well because he was the one that took Virgil Van Dijk and Joe Gomez out of the game single handedly. I think he kept himself in and, in and about the game and he had impact and influence, which is what we wanted to see more of. And he didn't look that confident in recent games. He looked a lot more confident today. And that early goal would have done a lot to build that confidence, but he still built on it. We didn't see him build on it in the Crystal Palace game. We saw him build on it today. So I'm happy with his performance. Um, who else are we going to? Uh, Emerson didn't really do much. I'm not giving him a rating. Hudson Odoi, promising performance there. I think he had the assist for the third goal. I think he did. I'm not sure. Yeah, but I think he had a promising performance. He was pushing the ball forward well. Struggled a bit with the first touch at times. But when he started getting momentum behind him, he was a very dangerous player. So I'm going to give him a six as well. Pulisic, 8, straight up, and he's our best player when he came on. For the first goal, just by himself, for so setting up Tammy Abrams, then the second goal to wrap it up. And he will be so fuming with the way Kepa and Alonso and Rudiger let him down today. Yeah, Pulisic gets an 8, and I think that's the end of the player rating. So guys, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the player ratings down in the comment section below. Let me know if you still think we can get top 4. Let me know if you think we've kind of bowled it. Just let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I was hoping we'd try and pull a draw out of this, but that ain't happening. So at least I'm going to go smoke a draw. So like, subscribe, take care, and peace.